Hey Crossbridge, thanks so much for joining us this week for a very unique service. We're excited to connect with you today, so be sure to get in the comments and let us know where you're watching from. At Crossbridge, we are all about loving God, loving people, and serving the world. If you want to give to help further this mission and reach more people with the gospel, you can go to crossbridgecc.org give. There's a place for you at Crossbridge Online. If you're looking for more community, jump into one of our small groups. Go to crossbridgecc.org slash small groups to see all the groups we have available. Well, service is about to begin. We hope that you're encouraged today and find yourself taking one step forward in your faith. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all of my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O oh Lord, you know it all together. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain it. Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light about me be night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day for darkness is as light to you. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them. The days were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! If I would count them, there are more than the sand. I awake and I am still with you. O oh, that you would slay the wicked, O God! O oh, men of blood, depart from me! They speak against you with malicious intent. Your enemies take your name in vain. Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord? And do I not loathe those who rise up against you? I hate them with my complete hatred. I count them as my enemy. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there are any grievous way in me. And lead me in the way of the everlasting. Good morning, Crossbridge family, and welcome to Crossbridge Online. It's so good to be with you this morning. And if you are a guest with us, I just want to welcome you and say thank you so much for joining us. And I want you to know that my hope for you is the same as my hope for every person who's watching with us right now. And that simply is this, that no matter where you find yourself in your faith today, that you would be able to take one step towards Jesus, because that is what we are all about here at Crossbridge. Now you notice service looked a little bit different today that we didn't normally start with the worship through singing like we normally do in music. Instead, we were worshiping through the word and just kind of reading what scripture has to say. And there's so much beauty in that. And, and part of it is very, very intentional because we wanna be focused on what the Bible has to say, but also we recognize Facebook has changed policies and we wanted to make sure that we were still able to gather together. So I just wanna say thanks for joining us and thanks for stepping into something a little bit different. You'll also notice there's no giant blank wall behind me now, and so I can't even get washed away like I normally did, and many of you make fun of me and like do floating heads. That's simply because being outside today is because we are starting our new series called Pathways. And this is a series where we're gonna be talking about what it means to follow Jesus and the steps that we need to take. 
Now you'll notice I, I, I'm kind of bringing you to a very special place to me, and it's on these train tracks, a, a place where I spend almost every Monday walking these tracks and praying for you, praying for our people, praying for our community. And as I do that, I remember that every step we take in Jesus matters, doesn't it? It always matters. And so today I really, really hope that you're able to look at all that we are in right now, and this will be an image that you are able to remember and think about as we look forward with this whole series that we have. Now, I should tell you that I love nature. I really do. It's one of those things for me that just brings life into my soul. I like being out here. I like hearing birds. I like hearing kids that you're probably gonna hear in the background playing because that's what you should be doing if you're a kid right now, and it's great. And as I sit out here in nature, I could be out here all day. But if there's one thing that my small group will tell you, it's that I will not be out here at night. I actually am terrified of the woods and nature at night. I won't even sit with my back to the woods in our small group because you know what? No way. I will not be out there because it kind of freaks me out. But it's so funny because there is this idea for me of walking and taking trails, hiking through the woods and really, really enjoying it and picking the right pathway to go on. There are pathways to choose in all of our life. And the question is, what pathways will we choose to walk on and what guide will we use to tell us where to go and what steps to take? Now, Crossbridge, one of the cool things that we've done for this series that we don't normally do for other series, but we thought it would be so important, is if we're talking about picking a pathway, choosing to follow Jesus, and taking inten intentional steps in following him, we have a guide for you to follow along with us. For the next 10 weeks, we're going to be walking through this together, and I'm inviting you to join me on each and every one of these steps. And so to do that, you could click on the link right over here and it's gonna direct you to your booklet, your guide. We want you to download this PDF, print it out. There's space for journaling, space for Bible thoughts. For those of you that like to step into something a little bit more and you're like, oh, I wanna know more about that step. We've got ways that you could dig deeper, books you can listen to, apps that you could open. If you feel like this is really important for you personally, there's a place where you can have personal time to journal. But for our small groups at Crossbridge, there's space for you on how does your group handle some of these steps. But this is a guide that is designed for every single person at Crossbridge from you know, our, our kids and our teenagers to think through, what does it mean to follow Jesus? I know that I say it every single week. Well, we want you to take one step towards Jesus. It's what we're all about. You make fun of me, you point it out but I'd really be a pretty horrible pastor and leader if I didn't tell you what those steps were. You know, sometimes we like to just leave it in your hands. So let the Holy Spirit do his work in our lives together, right? To say, well, that's the step and it looks different. But for the next 10 weeks, we are taking steps together as a church, intentionally looking at where do we go and why. And the reason that I want to really dive into the next 10 weeks is because I've been obsessing, if you will, over two verses that are found in Matthew chapter 7. And if you have your Bibles with you, I'd love for you to turn to Matthew chapter 7. And uh, if you don't have it, we'll have it on the screen for you here in a second. But Matthew 5, 6, and 7 are the Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. It's the biography about Jesus written by Matthew. And in those three chapters, he sums up the essential teachings of Jesus. What is it that, that Jesus was really all about? And near the end of the chapter, in chapter seven, there's two verses that I, I, like I said, I've just been chewing on these so much for weeks at this point saying, God, what do you mean? Like, is it really this simple? This is what it says in Matthew chapter seven. You can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad and its gate is wide for the many who choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow and the road is difficult and only a few will ever find it. You know, this is a jarring teaching from Jesus. If you truly believe what Jesus says, that he is the way, the truth, the life, and that no one comes to the Father except through him, what you have to realize and I have to realize is that this teaching is very, very difficult. That there's, there's a way that everyone wants to go in life and then there's a very narrow path that, that people will take. And that narrow path is all about Jesus. And 
you know, as I've been chewing this and thinking through it and meditating on it, one of the problems for me is, is I don't use gates very often, right? Gates aren't something I think about. In Jesus' culture, they would have gates that guarded the city. So if you were walking in or around Jerusalem, there would be gates that would limit how many people could come in because the whole purpose was it was a way to protect your city when it was under siege, right? It was a way to make sure you were defensively ready. But then there were other areas where you wanted mass amounts of people to move through. So they'd have these big gates and they would want everyone to go through. It was wonderful. But that doesn't make sense to us. We don't use gates like this. Right now, I'm in a somewhat secluded area in South Jersey where it's kind of quiet. But right across the bridge is Philadelphia where we are dealing with tons and tons of highways and bypasses and jug handles on the Jersey side. And, and you know, when you're allowed to turn and not to turn and, and trying to figure out how to get into the easy pass lane versus paying the stupid toll to get over the Commodore Barry. You know, we, we try to make it as fast as we can and it's like, wait, how, how, can I, how can I relate this to us today in the 21st century? And if, I'm, if it's okay with you, I'd love to take some liberty really quick. And I would never say that this is authority or biblical, but if I could retell this story, this, these two verses in the 21st century, and if Jesus were to teach this and use our language and our words, I, I think he might say something like this. And this would be Matthew 7, 13 to 14, the New Jimmy translation. Entering into the kingdom is like hiking the entire Appalachian Trail. Sure, you could jump in your car and take I-95 from Georgia to Maine on the highways with everybody else. But the trail to Jesus doesn't go that way. His trail is longer, slower, and more difficult. And only a few are willing to take it. I don't know about you, but that imagery for me makes a little more sense. It's something that I can understand and it's something that I can work with because there's a huge difference between the Appalachian Trail and I-95, isn't there? I mean, we all know that, that, that if you were to start in Georgia where the Appalachian Trail it starts and go all the way up to Maine where it ends, you can get in your car and it's gonna be uh, probably about 1,400 miles for you to get there. Okay, so 1,400 miles. In those 1,400 miles, if you drove a sedan like mine, let's just say you're sitting on four cylinders because I don't want you to waste your gas. It's gas efficient. You got your easy pass. It would cost you approximately about 125 bucks in tolls and gas to get from Georgia to Maine. It would cost you, uh, it depends on how much you like to eat, but let's be real. If your goal is just to get to Maine and say, I did the Appalachian Trail, but I did it on I-95, you're going to go as fast as you can. It's going to take you approximately 22 hours. And we all know that the food that we would eat on that journey would not be stopping and saying, well, what salad could I build? You're thinking in that moment, what's the snack mix that's going to keep me from going to the bathroom until I have to stop for gas again? You may get to a point where you're thinking, I wonder how long I can go without going to the bathroom and blow through the limits of my body in order to get an extra 30 miles because I'll get there a little bit faster. How fast can I speed to make sure that a cop won't pull me over, but I'm also going to get there a little bit earlier. If I go 10 miles an hour and over every hour, I gain 10 miles, I'll gain 110 hours. And so maybe 22 hours, you could get it done quicker, but you might get tired. If you get tired, what are you going to do? You could have coffee. That might work. But the reality is you're probably going to grab a five hour energy. You're going to try to see how much you could get through. Why? Because some of us really like to boast about how fast we did it. We went from start to finish accomplishing more than we thought, but we got it done. You know, sometimes I worry that, uh, we push past the limits that God's given us on these journeys and this idea of going from Georgia to Maine on I-95 is the way that most of us live. I mean, do you remember so many of the details in a story and in a journey like that? I don't think you do. I've done that trip before and you think, I just need to get there. The goal in a trip like that is the destination. It's not the journey that you take. And when we apply this idea to our spiritual lives, 
if I'm being candid with you, I don't think Jesus is in the car with us. I know that we say things all the time like, Jesus, take the wheel. And I don't know, when I look through the Bible, I don't ever see Jesus with driving gloves on. Do you know, we're, we're always saying, take the wheel. And it's like, well, maybe we're just going too fast. Maybe we shouldn't be in that car to begin with. Maybe there's a different path that's not as fast, not as rushed, not as go, 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 that life will look different for us. Now, I'll confess, the Appalachian Trail is something I have never, ever hiked before. I would have to be in the woods at night, and I could tell you, that's not happening. And so I have no desire to do the nighttime part of that trail. But believe it or not, I actually have three friends who have uh, hiked that entire trail, and they're what they would call through hikers. They started in Georgia uh, sometime in the early, early spring, and they end in Maine in the just beginning to middle of fall before winter hits up there and they get freezing. They have started at Springer Mountain in Georgia and they made it to Mount Katahdin, I think is what it's called, in Maine. I learned about this trail specifically from their stories. Now, it's a shorter, or it's actually a longer track. Would you believe that? It's 1,400 miles to take I-95 to go. But if you were to choose to hike it, it's actually 50% longer, over 50%. You would have to hike about 2,200 miles of land to get there. And it, it, it's, I don't know about you, but to think that like, if you wanted to do this, it becomes so inefficient, doesn't it? If you wanted to do this, why would you not just get on 95 and walk it? It's shorter, 50% shorter. Why would you want to do that? But efficiency is what's on the brain when you're just trying to get to a destination. But if they started, they couldn't finish it in 22 hours trying to pound coffee or, you know, monsters and Red Bulls and five hour energy drinks. It would actually take somewhere between five to seven, seven months to do this trip. And the average person who goes through this journey on the Appalachian Trail, it takes about six months and one week if they go start to finish. And they do say, statistically only one out of every four who start that journey at the trailhead who desire to be through hikers will make it to the end only one in four as i talked to my friends who have taken this trip i found it interesting that as they started their journeys you're actually requested by everyone on the trail not to use your real name you begin to hike and the people you hike with give you a new name. You end up getting a new name on this trail. And that new name, I, when I first thought about it, I'm like, well, why? Is Jimmy not a good enough name? Is that like forbidden on the trail? And I remember one of my buddies, he said to me, he said, Jimmy, it's actually really nice when they don't use your name because you know that the baggage of what you came from is not what you're held accountable to on that trail. Something new is happening on that trail and something's changing in you. And not that you become someone completely different, but who you are is transformed on that trail. And that name reminds you, the three people I know that have hiked that trail all have their new name tattooed on them because they never want to forget who they are. When they told me that, I was kind of like, well, well, I want a new name. Like, give me a new name. And they're like, you haven't hiked the trail. And I'm like, I'm never going to get a new name from you. They told me as they went about the places that they stopped. They could tell me the, the towns that they, or the, the cities that they, the towns and trail parts that they camped in. What camping areas were better? What camping areas were worse? When they stopped and they took the privilege of going to a local tavern in one of the small towns that are really only held together by these hikers, they learned bartenders' names and waiters' and waitresses' names. They learned their stories. And they shared their stories with me. They started the trail in Georgia with one set of people. And in Tennessee picked up someone else, and Virginia picked up someone else, in West Virginia there was someone new, in Pennsylvania there was a new group of people, in New Jersey they got black bears, you know. And, and as you continue to go through the trail you realize who you started with isn't who you were going to end with, but every single person on that trail with you had the same exact desire and it wasn't to get to the end as fast as possible. It was to keep taking one step in front of the other. And what they found is 
with each new name. It was not an easy track. There were days that they would go without food because maybe they planned incorrectly or they thought something would look different. There was weather that when they thought they would complete X amount of that trail, they didn't move that day because it was so bad. There's injuries and would you believe that with injuries on the trail, instead of them sitting and saying like, we can no longer move ahead, we have to get to a point where we stop and take care of you and the people who take care of you, you might not even have known them. And then by healing, your job was then to look for the people who are injured to take care of them and to help them along to continue their journey. You know, I'll never forget hearing about the transformation of their stories and, and it cost them up to six months of time. Instead of 125 bucks in gas and tolls, it cost them thousands and thousands in money. They don't wanna go back to what they did, they are so satisfied with the transformation of that journey. They've been transformed and they wanna tell everyone about it. You know, Jesus is clear. You've got options in life. You and I have options in the way that we choose to live our life. And you know what? One of them, it's efficient. It's faster. It's likely cheaper. The other, it's unbelievably inefficient. It's going to cost you more time. It's going to be dangerous. And every step that you take, you're liable to trip. There's no cruise control on that option. There's only one step at a time towards Jesus. At Crossbridge, this entire series if I could give you an image, is all about taking the Appalachian Trail of Jesus. I don't want to get on I-95. I don't want Easy Pass. I don't want five-hour energy drinks or whatever it is that we use to bust through the limits that God has put on our lives. This is about a different pace of life towards Jesus. And I think I've been watching so many of us sitting there asking the same question of, God, why does it feel like this? And I feel like Jesus is watching us right now and he's watching us jump into our spiritual cars, racing up and down the East Coast, going as fast as we can, trying to get extra mileage, thinking I'm almost at my destination, I'm almost at my destination, and we're begging him over and over, Jesus, take the wheel. And, and we wonder, why does it never feel like you're in control of my life? Why am I not getting anywhere, even though I'm going back and forth and back and forth? And the whole time he's been sitting at the trailhead in Georgia waiting for us. I, I, I imagine him just kind of sitting on a stump, looking up at us with that grin. He's got a cool hiking stick. And he's saying, I've been here. And we show up. We got strung out five hour energy eyes. Our bodies are exhausted from the fast food culture that we didn't even get nutrition. And we're out of gas and money. And we're like, what are we supposed to do? And he looks up at us. And instead of shaming us, instead of being frustrated or saying like, I knew you knew better. I believe the words that Jesus says in Matthew chapter 11 are the words that he says to us in this exact moment. And I wanna read this for you out of the message translation. It says this in Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Can you picture the Jesus grin when he says this? When he looks at you and he looks at me and he says invitationally, hey, listen, do you want to go for a walk? Do you, do you want to work together on this thing? You look exhausted and wiped out, man. 
21st century man, you're wiped, you're toasted. 21st century woman, you're strung out and overscheduled. 21st century teenager and kid, you're so busy and anxious. I, I, I don't have that for you. I have something different. Come with me, I'll show you how to recover your life. But make no mistake, it will not be a straight, fast, or easy journey by any means. Each of us is going to choose a path. Every one of us in every decision we make is choosing whether we get on the highway or the trail. And Jesus isn't going to kidnap you. He isn't going to just, you know, put you in a knapsack and try to take you up the trail if you do not want to go. That's not the way that Jesus works. It's, it's this invitational thing. But I don't know about you. I feel like sometimes our culture has kidnapped me that I get sucked into things that I don't want to be sucked into and I'm left looking saying, why do I do this? Why am I always rushed? Why do I feel the need to be on some of these social media platforms to see if someone likes this or likes that or how do they respond or what do they do? The, the, the pace of life isn't fair. What's my side hustle and how am I getting it done? All of these things feel like I've been kidnapped and I don't want to do that, but I'm stuck. This is not the pace and the life that Jesus has for us. Crossbridge, I, I, want, I want to take a walk with you over the next couple of weeks. I will not force you. I will not mandate it. But as your pastor, I want to invite you to take one step towards Jesus, to choose a path that looks different. And I will tell you up front, the next 10 weeks will not be I-95 for you. It's not about filling up your tank so that you can get as far as you can this week. That is not the pace that we are going to go. We are going to go at a much slower pace. This is a trail series, which is why I want you to have your PDF as your trail guide to walk you through what we're about to do. This whole series, this whole time together is about experiencing and working with Jesus like his invitation in Matthew. Come with me. I will walk with you. I will work with you. We get to do this with Jesus. And this journey is about each step and not just each step, but each misstep that we take along the way. Because I promise you this, if you choose to take the Appalachian Trail of Jesus, you will fail on some of your steps just like I do. But the grace of God is an essential piece of each of our journeys and each of our steps. And he invites you on this journey first, understanding that you can't do it on your own. Did you know that? You cannot do this journey on your own. You need him with you as your trail guide and as your companion. And if you don't know Jesus and you think, I'm going to pick up this booklet and I'm going to go to town, I'm going to do this, you will fail so horribly. You might think you're going to get some good things out of this, but without the power and presence of Jesus Christ in your life, the sin that you have and the issues that you carry into this journey will be too much for you to tackle. We are all simply sinners. And I need you to tell you that we are stuck in the car being invited into a journey. We are invi being invited to take the seatbelt off, open the door, get out of the car, Place your trust in Jesus today, who loves you, who died for you, and who gave himself up as a sacrifice for your sin and for mine and says, I've given you everything and my request is, would you follow me? We're going that way. And it's going to get bumpy. Would you come with me? I feel like um, this path is something that for us leads us to transformation. Our destination will always be at the feet of Jesus and the kingdom of heaven, that God's kingdom would come in heaven and on earth, right? That this is what we want. But our journey while we take every step in life is about transforming and being transformed into the image of Christ for the sake of others. This is not about your convenience. This is not about your best life or living the best you. This is about being conformed in the image of Christ for the sake of others. And, and I kind of feel like Paul when he says to the church in Rome in Romans 12 verses 1 and 2, he says, So dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all that he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind that he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behaviors and the customs of this world, but let God transform you 
into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. So where we're about to go, um, for some of you, this is gonna be a difficult couple of steps. For others of you, you are gonna step into some of these practices that we're about to go through and you're gonna think this is the coolest thing in the world. Why have I not been doing this forever? And that's because I think some of it is we just don't know. And so the goal is, is to look at our guide together, look at this PDF that we have and say, how can we take a single step? I don't want you to run down these tracks. I don't want you to go as fast as you can. You're gonna trip on the trellises, I promise. And sometimes we need to get off this path and we're gonna go through the trails and we're gonna kind of forge some rivers and woods and nastiness and, and, and there's some beauty in that because we need to remember that Jesus is with us and that he has gone before us. And there's nothing that we're gonna do and no steps that we're gonna take that Jesus hasn't modeled and we don't see in scripture. This is all based on what scripture says. And we want for each of us, just like it says in Romans, to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. There's things that we need to learn and understand so that we know what God's will is for our life, his good, his pleasing, and his perfect will. Enough is enough with saying, well, what does God want for me? I don't know, when's the last time you hung out with Jesus to ask him? Remember, he's at the trailhead and we're on Virginia flying through. It's time to pause. It's time to slow down. I think what Jesus has to say and offer us is so important. And lots of people, please hear me on this, they heard Jesus' teaching, but they did not listen to it. There's a huge difference between hearing the word and listening to the word. One is there was noise. I recognize it. The other is I heard that tree fall. I knew it was a tree because I was near it. I heard the words of Jesus, not just wah, 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 but I heard what he said. And now I'm listening and doing something about it. Jesus was an unanxious presence in all situations that he's in, and that's what he's called us to be. So if you're a little nervous about this or anxious, if you're nervous, I get it. That's okay. If you're a little like, whew, here we go. I am with you. If you're anxious, that's not the way of Jesus. There's nothing to be worried about. You will not fail at anything here. As long as you are attempting to line your life up with Jesus's, you're fine. These steps, these transformations on the Jesus pathway, um, when you download that trail guide, you'll learn in the next couple of weeks, here's where we're going, are you ready? Here's the next nine weeks and the next steps. We're gonna talk next week about prayer and meditation. What does that mean? How do we do that? Then we're gonna move into study, how to look at the word of God. If you're soaping already, you got this. What about fasting? What does it mean to go through self-denial and not do something that we want to do? What about service and looking at the community of Crossbridge and those around us to say, how am I loving the people around me and giving up for them? Solitude. There's a great gift and step in being alone. Do you know you could do that journey of the Appalachian Trail and sometime there's no one else on it. It's just you. This is part of our journey, loneliness. Submission and what it means to give up authority. We're gonna take the step of Sabbath, giving up 24 hours and intentionally choosing to say for 24 hours, I will not work. Confession not just kind of hiding in your bedroom saying, well, God, I did bad things, forgive me, but actually verbalizing, here's where I have sinned and listening to the gift of others to say, but you have been forgiven. Oh, I can't wait for that week. And we're gonna end with celebration. What does it mean to laugh and get so excited about what God is doing in the little things, in the big things, and throw a party because we serve a God who likes to party. There are parties all over the Bible we have to learn to celebrate, not just be the hermits who are all solo in the woods praying and Bibling. There's all these steps that we take and not one of them at any point is going to be the magic step for you. I'm telling you that, these are all held in rhythm and time with each other. We do this together because we wanna take steps towards Jesus. So the question that I wanna ask you simply is this, which path will you choose? Crossbridge, I love you, I miss you, and I cannot wait for you 
to sit and take patience to hear the birds around you on your journey, to hear the streams that run by, to know the people's stories who hike alongside you because you are not alone. But that will never happen in the car flying at 80 miles an hour. So Crossbridge, the choice is yours. Which pathway will you take? I want to leave you with the words of Jesus this morning. You can enter through God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad and its gate is wide for the many who choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow and the road is difficult and only a few will ever find it. We're so glad that you joined us this morning at Crossbridge Online. Coming up next at 11 a.m. is our CB Kids Experience. You can find the links plus ways to stay connected with us all throughout the week at crossbridgecc.org.